The federal government has just made it easier for Canadians to buy houses. Kind of. And I'm not really in agreement with what they did. In fact, I'm kind of surprised how much they pushed that upper limit for insured mortgages. I would have thought this was coming at some point. And obviously, let's just put it out here to start this video. I'm not going to edit this one. This is just going to go as fast as possible. Obviously, this is happening in anticipation that there's going to be an election at some point, right? Regardless of where you stay on the political side of things, um, this is very clearly coming out now on purpose. People have been asking about this. It's coming out now on purpose. So what are the two things that typically hold people back from entering the real estate market, right? Uh, well, it's monthly payments on the mortgage and it's down payment. Both of those have, I guess, technically been addressed today by our federal government. Um, so if you haven't heard this news or you haven't watched any other videos already, essentially the way that it used to work is that if you purchased a property over $1 million, uh, you could not get an insured mortgage on it, which means you had to put a minimum of 20% down. So that was $200,000, right? That's a, that's a huge down payment that people struggle to come up with. That number, which was a million, has just been pulled up to 1.5 million. I am kind of shocked they went that high. I thought maybe they'd go like one, two, five, zero, kind of meet in the middle there. I, I'm actually very surprised they went that high. And you would think if you're maybe struggling to get into the market, oh, this is this is great. I can get approved for more because I don't have the down payment. Like you still have to get approved for it. Still doesn't mean you can buy a more expensive property. Um, and if you're a first time home buyer, well, the news of getting a 30 year AM on resale properties, not just new construction, like the, the last previous announcement, this would bring down your monthly payments. And I think they, they said like, if the average sale price in Canada was just over $600,000, this will bring down your monthly payments by like 300 bucks or something like that. Okay, so those two things have been addressed, right? I'm torn on this. I think a lot of people will see this and run with it. I love the real estate community. I'm a part of it, but everyone's going to celebrate this like it's a big win. Can you imagine the conversation from Tiff and the gang at the Bank of Canada days being like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, did you really have to do this? We're, we're going in the right direction. The rate cuts are happening. I know the economy is not good. Let's be very clear on that. That's why the rate cuts are happening. But we're getting things under control. And now the federal government has come out and basically say, as of December 15th, this year, at the end of this calendar year, okay, that million dollar threshold is going to 1.5. So you can now buy a more expensive property with less money down. Is that good for inflation? Is that good to create demand? No. Why it's happening is because there's an election coming up. It's very obvious, right? Now, the second one, I would argue, is less of a big deal because I think it is encouraging and it's going to impact that bottom end of the market. We talk about here in Toronto, at least in my market, like our condo segment is struggling right now. There's a lot on the market and the buyers aren't there because they're not qualifying or they can't afford that monthly payment, perhaps allowing them to extend to 30 years. If you have a down payment under 20%, that will be a good thing for them. That will help them get into the market. And yes, you are paying more interest over a period of time, right? Like none of these changes mathematically at least over the long term, are actually helpful. It's just creating more debt into the economy, which will create demand. When money is cheaper, you can get access to more of it. Well, you know, we've seen this playbook before, right? So I am torn on this. I do think the first time home buyer thing is good. And the, the third announcement, which isn't getting as much attention, is I believe that the previous announcement for the 30 year amortizations for new construction homes, that was just for first time home buyers. Now that's for everybody. So just to recap everything today, if you were to buy a property and have to have mortgage insurance, which means less than a 20% down payment, it used to be a million dollars. You could get up to that, but then over that, you had to put 20% down, right? You had to. Now that number went to 1.5 million. I'm still waiting for exact clarification. Let me know if something comes out after I talk about this. Let me know in the comments for like that million to one five. What's the minimum down payment there? Is, is it 10% on that money? What exactly does this look like? So here's what I think. I think that this is timed perfectly. I think they knew exactly what they were doing. This will create a lot of buzz. It could, in fact, even though it's not happening until later this year, just the conversation 
could could get buyers, you know, slowly back into the markets that are having issues right now. And I think at the the bottom end of the market, which is the condo sector here in Toronto, just specifically based on price point, yeah, like this might actually make things pick up a little bit. Uh, you could very much make arguments that the builders are now being bailed out. That's not just first time home buyers that can get 30 year AMs or anybody buying those properties or going to be closing on a new construction they paid probably way too much money for a few years ago, but they're closing on it at the beginning of next year. You know, this will help people close on properties and bring down those monthly payments, but you will just pay a lot more in interest over a period of time. I think short term, this will create a little bit of buzz. I think long term, it's just not the best timing. I think you really should have allowed Bank of Canada to do what they needed to do. Get the overnight rate down. Let the dust settle and then introduce something like this. Introducing this now. And again, I get why they did it, right? I think that's all like kind of obvious here how politics works in Canada. I just can imagine Tiff uh, waking up today, looking at this news and going like, come on, guys. We're, we're moving in the right direction. What the heck? Why do you got to do this to me? Like they must have a group chat at the Bank of Canada, which I would pay so much money to see what they are actually saying. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Tom Story. And remember, home is where your story begins. And you can buy a home with less money down than you used to have to. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you soon.